In our last video, we went through our entire NES collection in order to come up with enough value to trade for something huge. It wasn't easy. You could tell the entire time watching. This was something Scott really didn't want to have to do. But what choice did we have? So, in this video, we're going to talk about what we actually got and if we had to trade our entire NES collection to get it. Keep watching. All right. This is not, these are not phones. No, that's not Just what I picked FYI, up. Just FYI, we got those last week. This was a bag that I had in the car. Before we show you what we got, because I'm sure a few of you are pretty curious what yeah. we, what we, uh, what we were stressing out about. Um, we're gonna tell you how we acquired it. We originally thought we were gonna have to trade a large portion of my NES collection. And up until the morning of, <laughs> when I woke up that morning, I was like, I can't, I just, I can't. I waited for him to wake up and then he was prepared to do it. And I put my foot down, like all good women do. I did trade some stuff. Yeah. But it was all doubles that were in my collection. And no, no. There was a couple doubles in your collection because I don't want people to think we put this on. Mm, no, no, this no. This was not put on. I didn't have anywhere near. I had uh, a double of Metal Gear Solid on the uh, GameCube. Yes. And that, that's got some pretty good that's value. That's got some value. I had a double of uh, uh, Fatal Fa Frame 3 on the uh, PS2. And then I had a handful of just generic Xbox games that were doubles. We also traded stuff that we had got uh, in a thrift. In a thrift, exactly. Yeah. I can tell you what I had in trade value. Yeah. Because I know exactly how much they gave me in trade value. Yeah. They gave me $198 in trade value. And uh, I'll tell you right now, it didn't even... It wasn't even half. No, it wasn't even half. No. It was like a third. So, So. what was your plan? I had an epiphany. You guys have heard me talk about PC points before. We used... Yeah, we used... About $300 yeah. in points. Well, we, we just basically took our grocery budget for this week, used points, and took the money the, that we would use. For groceries. And, and put, put it in towards this. So if we get hungry, we're going to have to eat it. Yeah, we're well, we have we got we have groceries and we still have tons of points yeah. in there. We still have over a thousand dollars in points. If you guys wonder how, sometimes how we afford some of this stuff, that sat a lot better with me when I passed it by Scott. Yep. He felt a lot better about it, and I'm like, well, why aren't we doing this? I felt a little guilty though at first for using the PC points. I feel like I talked you into this, but I couldn't imagine you taking your NES games and getting rid of them. It just didn't make sense to me that no, we had I, this other option. No, I know. That didn't matter. But if that, yeah. It didn't matter. Getting rid of what we got rid of, I won't even be able to tell you what it was this time next month. It didn't really matter. It didn't, it, oh, getting rid of those and... NES games, I go over to that shelf and see it almost <laughs> empty every day empty and space. feel yeah, like, feel horrific. So, so this sat a lot better. So without further ado, it is a sealed copy of Zelda 2, The Adventures of Link. Yep. It has got the black sticker seal on the top. It is not perfect by any means. No. Nope. You can see the back, there is a piece of, like a big piece of scotch tape. Yeah. We'll have to stay there because we don't it, dare even try to yeah, get it off. It was, uh, I think somebody hung it on a wall at some point way back when. Yes. Uh, but other than that, besides a few nicks, scuff marks where a, sweat, or a sticker was on the front. Thing down there. There's a sticker here. Yeah. You know. It's in really, it, it was that intact. The bottom is in really good shape yeah. too. It's that intact Nintendo seal. I've never come across a, a sealed Nintendo game, but I've never gone to a big uh, big uh, gaming conventions no. and stuff like that, so maybe there are. But in this little city that we live in, yeah. there, I've never seen one. That doesn't mean there aren't some out here, but... And to that point, when you were at Parlor, they said to you, they had, he had, in uh, all the this time working there... The served me that all the time he's working there, he's never had one come to the store. I'm still in shock that it's ours. Alex is still in shock because someday it'll be his. Well, that's the purpose. <laughs> that's how I view the collection going. Yeah. I'm not gonna have huge amounts of games 
I would rather, uh, especially in my later years, to start trading and selling yeah. and uh, start acquiring things that have way more value and it would take up less space. Yeah. So more bang for the buck for the game, you know? So in, in, you know, later years, I see when we have less money to actually collect that the games that we do collect now, there will be some of them that'll leave for better games, but it won't cost oh, yeah. us anything at that yeah. point, which is why we're spending the money now. We're not yeah. going into debt for this. It's just savings. This is how we did it. For me, this is kind of a special item to have in my game room. Uh, I am debating or probably going to look into possibly getting Grading it graded. It? I don't yeah. know how to do that at all. If there are any collectors out there watching this that have done it um, or would suggest not to or know where I can do it, yeah. maybe in the comments and yeah, point me in the right direction. I hope you guys enjoyed this little it was like a mini series. It was kind of came together. It just yeah, it wasn't planned. It was uh, the EverDrive we had bought, so we had planned to do the review. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we had done our time with it, and I just wanted to kind of show, you know, the benefits of it, and it's really cool. It it really could replace it the could. 68 it really games could. that I had. It really could. But, but it's hard <laughs> to replace sentimental value. Yeah. Some of them have sentimental value there. I don't know, we're physical collectors. So still, even though, yes, we would have that physical yeah. one game, it's not like looking at the actual I, game on the shelf. I like having a Nintendo collection. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, however small it is, we enjoy our yeah, collection. Yeah. I mean... Anybody who watched all three episodes, I guess it was like a mini series. We said uh, we really <laughs> appreciate it. We weren't trying to draw it out on you guys, but it just it, 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 it was stressful. It was stressful, yeah. It was stressful. The picking out the games. Could you guys like people that are watching that have a collection? Could you do that? Could you narrow it down that much? Like I had 68 games, and I think I had ended up with 10, 10 games. We were really gonna do it. That's and we I was trying to get enough value combined with the other. The GameCube games and stuff I knew I was going to trade. I was trying to get enough value yeah. to actually trade outright for it. But True. luckily, I didn't. Ha luckily, I didn't have to. But yeah. Put this on the shelf, and then maybe we can take a picture, a quick video of where it's going for you. Yeah. Let's right. give it a new home. New well, home. It only seems right that it goes up on the top. Oh, so Steel it's Battalion. Well, Steel Battalion. You barely had. It's still going to be up here yeah. displayed with the other Xbox games. I actually got to get more of these plastic protectors, but for my Super Nintendo collection there, because uh, some of these boxes are, the games are getting up there. Yeah. It's been a really cool video. And thanks guys again for watching. Thank you.